What's up guys, Games and welcome back to Pro Simulator 2023 for episode number 11 of the Bolton Equities Black Spoke career mode, the first episode of season 2. If you missed the end of season 1, uh, there is an episode before which is just a quick recap of uh, last year's season, the transfers, promotions and relegations. But today we begin season 2 and we start with the race we didn't do last year, which are the Australian Championships. There is a wild card waiting for us for the Santos Tour Down Under, whether we'll get it is a different story. But for now, let's try to carry on with our 100% record of winning road national titles here in Buninyong. And our first race of the season has begun here in Buninyong, 160 kilometers. I mean, if it wants to start, thank you. Um, Alistair Makara, Dylan Hopkins, Sebastian Berwick, three of our signings uh, making their debut today. It's a minus one for Sebi Berwick. I would have liked him to have a good day. Um, I did have him starting the season as a super high or very high in uh, fitness because of the down under. Um, 85 fitness is not the uh, stat I was looking for, but we'll make it work either way. Um... I'm not seeing any new teams directly here on the screen, um, at least not in the top 20. Uh, maybe here, or maybe not, I'm not sure, Jared Dresden is here for the team uh, Bridge Lane, I'm not sure what that name rings a bell, because you wrote for uh, Lotus of Destiny and I had a save with them at one point. Either way, I digress. Um, we're going to send Alistair Makela in the breakaway. I thought about sending Dylan Hopkins as well, but I figured if there's an issue with Sabi Berwick, I'd like to have some support with him. So I reckon we're going to try and have a single man breakaway with Alistair, be joined by some riders, and hopefully we can, uh, well, hopefully we can win. I think it's safe to assume that the Australian champion is in the breakaway. 18 minutes with 80 kilometers remaining, unless it's uh, stage four of the Tour de France fam, where they drop the lead, drop by like 10 minutes in three kilometers. This should see the end in Bonnie Young. Alistair McAllen is there, so is Declan Rice, Bradley Wiggins. Uh, Peggy Carter and him. All right, final uh, hill of this national championship. Uh, the peloton overtook us. Um, they were 29 minutes down and are 19 minutes behind. So uh, maybe they'll be able to come back. Uh, they, they won't, let's be honest. Um, I'll attack as soon as the road goes up, i.e. now. There goes the Lester Makala. Who's in my wheel? A Rice, Kemp, oh, Wiggins and Carter don't follow immediately. Okay. So far, so good. I'm gonna try and see if we can maybe drop rice. We can. All right, now I need to push until the summit. Hopefully rice and chem don't work together. And if they don't, uh, well, there's a strong case to make that I will win this national championship. Final three kilometers, one more corner left. Kemper and rice are trying to come back, but I think, I think it's gonna be slightly too short. And Alistair Makala is going to take his biggest career win so far here in Baninyong. 100% record on the national championships and we carry on. Strangely, I feel like we're going to have less success here in Ballarat for the time trial championship of Australia. We're here with Sam Berwick, oh sorry, Seb Berwick. 70 time trial today for our new signing, uh, but let's be honest. The chances of me winning are barely inexistent um, because, well, there's a lot of better time trialists. Uh, Luke Plapp exists. Has J... Uh, J Vine exists, sorry. Michael Hyburn, Ben O'Connor. Yeah, quite some riders. Also, Dylan Hopkins is already dead and there's two kilometers left on the parkour for him, which is great. Um, yeah, let's just have fun. I was quite surprised that I was first for a long time at the Intermediate. Uh, it's a good thing that I'm not anymore with uh, Seb Berwick. P4 at the Intermediate. As we cross the line in Ballarat, it is P1, 37 seconds quicker than Callum Scottson. Uh, we gain 10 seconds on him. I think we could potentially try to fight for P3 with Ben O'Connor. Um, oh, actually, wait, no, Luke Plapp hasn't crossed the line yet. Okay, let's take a quick look at Luke Plapp at the Intermediate, and he's going to be a minute ahead of everyone. He's behind me. Jai Hindley across the line. One minute on Sebastian Berwick. Fuck me. Okay. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Edmonton takes P2. Okay, yeah, they finished stronger than I did. Ben O'Connor, P2. Michael Hepburn could be the biggest threat to Jai Hindley. P2. Javan is non existent. I think Luke Plapp is going to struggle unless he had a great second half of the time trial, which. 
He hasn't had its P4 for him, it's P6 for us, and it's Jai Hindley, the new time trial champion of Australia. We have not been invited to the uh, tour down under, to my uh, huge sadness. Um, therefore, we're going to a race that you guys haven't seen yet. Uh, I haven't changed the name because I wasn't sure the race would work, if I'm honest. Uh, but no more is La Vuelta a San Juan Internacional. We are in the tour of the desert of Mojave. Or just to... Our Tour of the Deserts, I think, is the full name. Um, three sprint stages, a time trial, two hilly finishes, and a mountain top finish. We've got Mark Stewart ready for the hills. We've got Archie Ryan ready. 81 mountain for Archie Ryan! Yes! Ooh. And we've got Matthew Walls for the sprint. Um, let's try to have fun. Four riders for Jumbo Visma, and they brought Roglic, Vingegaard, and Von Hart. <laughs> Fuck me. And we're prepping for our first mass sprint of the year, the first sprint of Matthew Waltz with his new colours. Josh Burnett is trying to bring Mark Stewart, Matthew Bostock and Matthew Waltz at the front of the peloton. It's a bit of a struggle here being blocked by the riders of Sudal Quickstep. Uh, Florence Nechal has moved to Jaiko Alula. As uh, I can see the former French champion right there. We're going to stop Josh Burnett. Stewart, Bostock, Matthew Waltz is our train for our first sprint of the season in Fort Mojave. Mark Stewart is going to launch Matthew Bostock, it's slightly downhill, hence the uh, earlier launch, and it's going to be a win for us, quite a comfortable one, Matthew Walls wins the first race of the season ahead of Archie Ryan and Wout van Aert, nope, Mesget, woo! Alright, good start! Another sprint stage between Fort Mojave and the Lake Mead viewpoint, however, the end is a 2km hill at an average gain of 5% and a max of 14 and the minus 1 on Matthew Walls doesn't really strike me with confidence heading into this finish, so we may have to go back to our, a, um, our old Matthew Bostock or even Mark Stewart to get the stage or just lose to Jonas Vingegaard or White Van Aert. Or Primus Roglic. When the final hill, uh, the finish arrived a lot earlier than I had uh, expected. But it's fine, we went the breakaway with Lucas Sowers, uh, sadly, to no end. Uh, the breakaway was cool, and also, I mean, the, it wasn't a good breakaway, if we're being um, if we're honest. Is that, is that Tobias Holland Johansson? Well placed. That's Sam Bennett, very well placed as well, fucking hell. Uh, Mark Stewart is also in good position, uh, if the win could be on, on his side. Tobias Van Johansson is right next to Mark Stewart, as a matter of fact. There goes the um, British rider. He's actually killed anyone or everyone in my team. And unless Tobias makes a late comeback, which he doesn't, it's a win for Mark Stewart ahead of Matthew Bostock here at the Lake Mead viewpoint. 2-2 two two on this Vuelta a Mojave. And this is where we're going to lose the tour of Mojave, because uh, there's a time troll. So yeah, we're, we're fucked. Uh, Vingegaard is 16 seconds out of Sani. Primo Struglitch lost 1 minute 30 on Vingegaard. Are you mad? I knew I was fucked. I didn't know how much. But yeah, I'm gonna get absolutely battered in this time trial. It's actually ridiculous. I'm 5 minutes down at the intermediate. Tobias Haaland Jonathan is gonna lose 10 minutes. 10 minutes! What the fuck was this? <laughs> yeah, we're done now. Wow. So good thing you can't be OTL on the time trial because uh, someone lost 16 minutes today. Matthew Walls lost 12. I'm absolutely in shock. <laughs> I lost 551. Now I know I'm not a good time trialist. Like, I've got that in mind. 551. Nah. No, no way. More sprints today between the Railroad Pass and Boulder City after yesterday's um, interesting time trial, to say the least. I think Yama Vesma is going to win. I could be wrong, but I think they'll win the GC. Um, we'll try and salvage things, uh, getting some stages, maybe through Matthew Walls today, uh, unless Wood Van Aert wants to sprint, which to be fair, he probably could. Um, 72 mountain. I feel like it's a bit low for Wout, if I'm honest. I feel like Wout deserves at least 73, 74 in mountain. Um, but yeah, we'll try and make things work. But I have genuinely no hope after yesterday's time trial. Struggling a bit more in this stage to uh, find our rhythm and find our space. Fighting with uh, Tom Scully and uh, Yevgeny Gedic um, to. Um, to lead Matthew Walls, Matthew Bostock was blocked by um, by Daniel Oss. 
Thank you, Daniel. Very kind of you. There goes Matthew Bostock. It's, it's way too early. It's way too early. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. I know I've probably lost the stage doing so, but it was my only way of trying to do something. And I'll tell you what, we're actually gonna lose to Wet Von Art. Yeah, it would have been P2 nonetheless if it hadn't for out. I'll take P3, uh, but Von Art increases his lead in the GC as if it uh, wasn't already enough. We got some hills today um, in the uh, Moap Valley to the Hancock Summit. I think based on the current situation in general classification, the aim is to attack uh, with a few riders, see where we go from here, and you never know, the peloton might just let us go. I think there's a new team that I now dislike heavily, and that is Demlo. That is uh, the team Ayasa with uh, Georg Steinhauser and Sergei Shanetki. They've they, they've paced the entire day, and they've limited the gap to the breakaway to three minutes. And because of them, I probably won't be winning the stage with Archie Ryan because well they keep pacing and chasing us back. This is so dumb. Bahrain has killed Jack Haig and Fred Wright to try and chase us down now. I'm physically unable to tell you as to, to, tell, to tell you why. Because I don't get it. What is the plan? Steinhauser better be five minutes quicker than Vingegaard today. Because if he's not, and if he's paced the entire day, he's had his team paced the entire day for no reason, I'm, I'm gonna be pissed. And the Peloton won't win. The breakaway is going to take the stage today. Um, whether it's going to be Archie Ryan or not, I'm not sure. But the breakaway is now 3 minutes and 30 seconds ahead of the peloton. Fred Wright is dead. Um, Vingegaard is dead. Everyone is kind of dead. I'm going to attack early with, uh, with, Ma with Archie Ryan, sorry. Because I don't want to lose any time. The aim is to win with Archie today. <sighs> I mean... Had it not been for Ayasa Bahrain, I think I would have potentially taken the GC today. And it's a win for Archie Ryan at the Hankung Summit. And I'll tell you what, we're not far off the <laughs> we're not far off the, the lead of the GC. I mean, Michael is, is going to attack, and therefore I'm done. But it, it, it's we're going to make a nice comeback, GC wise. Queen stage of this uh, Tour de Mojave Oasis locked gate. It's a mountain stage of 82 kilometers and it climbs for roughly 60 kilometers. A bit less than that, Five, let's say 55, give or take. It's gonna be nuts. Uh, GC-wise, Archie has pulled up to P2 in the GC, 13 seconds behind, I'm gonna guess where it indeed. Um, so it's quite interesting. I may try the exact same tactic as yesterday. I'm just waiting to have more support at the front and we'll see what happens. If not, I'll try and race smartly with Archie. I could be wrong, but I feel like the Peloton is not a fan of Archie riding in, in the breakaway, because uh, <clears throat> my entire team has dropped. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not fun. I think this may be my dumbest decision of all time, but fuck it, we're gonna keep going at it. Eight riders up front, uh, we're being chased down by Primus Roglic. Archie Ryan has basically no energy. Nah, I can't, I can't carry on. I've got Michael Woods, I've got some very good riders in this group, there's no I can't, no, 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 no. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop pacing because it's basically suicide at this point. If Jonas Vingor could, like, decide to care about the race, that'd be quite nice. Because uh, the gap is three minutes to Miguel Lopez, who's on his another front. Um, then he, uh, Jonas literally only cares about Mark Stewart. That's it. He doesn't care about the other riders. If Mark Stewart moves, Jonas does. But hey, move Miguel Lopez. It's calm. Interesting. This race keeps being better and better. Um, Von Art has exploded. I mean, no, he hasn't exploded. He's just he's waiting for Vingegaard, and Vingegaard has exploded. Uh, we have a group of chase here with Esteban Chavez, Matthew Ryan, Mikel Honoré, and Michael Woods. We are trying to come back on Steinhauser and Peyo Bilbao. Gonna try and attack just so I can bridge with these guys. Mark Stewart is still alive and kicking, which is fun. Uh, gap is 140 with uh, Lopez, who's highly likely going to take the stage. But what matters here is that the GC has currently switched into the hands of the Irishman Archie Ryan. 
And, uh, I mean, I don't think Vingard is coming back at us because he's dead. I don't think Von Arth is coming back at us because he's dead. So Archie's in prime position to take the GC today. Archie Ryan has made Mark Stewart absolutely explode. Vingegaard, Von Art, Roglic are done out. It is the end of the road for Jumbo Visma. Archie Ryan is actually going to catch Miguel Lopez. We're just going to attack at the top of this hill to uh, make the contact with the Colombian. And we're going to try and drop him as we go over the um, Cottonwood. Five kilometers. Archie Ryan against Pebilba, Georg Steinhauser and Miguel Lopez. Could it be back-to-back -back wins for Archie Ryan? What a start of a career for Bolton Equities. Black spoke for the Irishman. 2.5 kilometers. The road is flattening a bit. 29 seconds. Make that 30 seconds. I don't think that these riders will be able to catch Archie Ryan. He was wearing green this morning. He's going to trade it for the white of a leader of La Vuelta San Juan. Or oh, I mean the Vuelta Mojave. <laughs> Weird. And it's a win for Archie Ryan at the summit of the locked gate. What a race. Come on. I think that will be the final race of the episode. Um, Grand Prix La Marseillaise. Fitness peak for Sub Berwick. And, uh, well, the aim is simple, it's, it's to win with him, uh, but usually on this parkour, you need a fast rider. Sebastian Berwick is not one of those. He would have been in an 11-man group, which will be fighting for the win on this Grand Prix La Marseillaise. Sebastian Berwick is with the main uh, favourites, Ulissi, Pedges, Groch, Arna, Stephen Williams, and Andrea Mifsud, who's made the move to, um, to Total Energy. But, you know, 135 is not going to be able to, uh, be, a uh, Taken back in the downhill portion. Alright, bit sad. And the winner of the Grand Prix La Marseillaise is going to be an unknown rider. It is Sebastian... No, Stefan Rabic from um, RSV. That is Felbermer? Yep, Felbermer is Zimplon Weiss. Uh, Peters leads the peloton, but I don't really care because I sprinted way too early. <sighs> Disappointing. Final stage in San Juan, final stage in the Mojave Desert. Desert? Sorry, yeah, desert. Between the Amanosa Valley and the Mountain Springs, GC-wise, we are now three minutes ahead of Wout van Aert and four minutes ahead of Georg Steinhauser. We're going to try and control the race today, which is going to be very different to our um, behavior for the final, uh, for the past two stages, should I say, where we were extremely offensive, uh... This time, yeah, the aim is to defend the uh, jersey currently worn by um, by Archie. I just lost La Tropicale Misa Bongo as well, uh, so I really don't want to lose a general classification. Last year, I hadn't lost a GC until the start of... Was it the Tour of Oman? I don't think I did the Tour of Oman. I know, I, I think it was the Tour of Taiwan was the first GC I lost. This year, I lost the first one I did. I don't want to lose two. The rhythm is completely bonkers. And it's lot of destiny? Huh, hold up. Why? Genuinely for Alex Sagat. Shut up. Shut up. Why? Well, I don't know what the fuck went into the, the mind of DSM today and Lotto Destiny, uh, but yeah, they're completely mental. Uh, Megan Markle just came back on the breakaway. Right, there's no one in the break. 10 kilometers to go. How does the peloton behave? They keep pacing. The fact that Matthew Wald is well placed, always better placed than Matthew Wald, uh, no, than Archie Run, it's quite sad. I was about to say that they've stopped their nonsense. I don't, I don't think they have. I'm not sure that they have stopped their nonsensical behavior here. Mountain Springs is right up the corner. Uh, some proper tap water to get the summit. I don't know if they do water, but it sounds like they do. Uh, Mark Stewart is leading Archie Ryan. 34 riders left in the first group. I don't think I'll lose the GC, because if I lose 3 minutes to Oven Art in 2 kilometers, then I deserve to just lose everything. Mark Stewart is going to lead out Archie Ryan. I do not plan on winning this stage, because I do not have the sprinting legs of a Wout Van Aert. But you never know, on a, on a good day, Archie could potentially try to claim a podium position. And as a matter of fact, we're going to lose to Wout Van Aert. Yeah, Archie just stopped. Archie was like, you know what, I've had enough. 
I don't like this cycling thing. <laughs> I'm stopped. Molenor gets fourth. I understand why DSM based. Where's Lotto? Fingergar is there. Jonas Vingor has lost to Mikael Frolich Honore. He's not even the best fucking rider from Denmark. There's a rider from Panama in P6! Who are you? All up! I gotta post this real quick. Who the fuck is Roberto Gonzalez? No, wait, there's a team from Panama. Is yet to ball? Why is in Panama? What? What? Taz Jones? Ah, sorry, I'm, I'm learning new things every day on this game. Who is this guy? PCV, any team that looks like PCV? I really would have said... No, it's, it had to be Demons. I, I'm just blind, aren't I? Yeah, I am blind. This Donny here with no stats above 69 finished P6. This guy here with no stats above 69 finished higher than a two-time Tour de France winner in Jonas Vingor. And Primus Roglic? Ah, this game is done. Alright, that just about wraps up episode 1 of season 2 or episode 11 of the Bolton Equities Black Spoke career mode. Uh, a decent one. We've won the Australian Championships, we've won one, two, three, four stages in San Juan and three jerseys, and two stages in, Ami uh, in the Amisa Bongo. That's already eight wins plus two distinctive jerseys. Um, it was the same as last year. Obviously, we start off the season quite well. I'm quite sad I didn't get to do the Down Under. I think now that I look back at it, I should have invited myself. But that just about wraps up the episode. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, then please do leave a like down below. If you're new to the channel and want to see more of this content going forward, then feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I'll catch you in the very, very near future. My name is Guillaume. Have an amazing day. See ya. Pass me the phone, get your phone.